As we continue our weekly series of Steelers Hall of Honor candidates and those members who are already in, it's my great pleasure to bring in one of the greatest Steelers of all time, enshrined in Canton, and of course, obviously, in the Steelers Hall of Honor, Lynn Swan joins us now on Saverin on Sports. Lynn, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Stan, I'm doing fine. I uh, hope it's a great day in Pittsburgh, but every day in Pittsburgh could be a great day. Yeah, you got to make what it, the sun is out, which you know we may not see again until July Fourth. So uh, it, <laughs> it's a good it's a good day. Um, you haven't been in sunny uh, sunny Southern California that long. You've forgotten what uh, the weather here can be like at, at times. Lynn, you've had such a remarkable career in so many areas and venues. Uh, certainly, as a football player, obviously but as a broadcaster in, in politics, uh, and now you're the athletic director at Southern California, and I, I wonder um, your thoughts about being in the upper level of academia. Well, you know, it, it, it's an interesting place to be with 650 athletes uh, that we have at USC uh, and helping them to have a great college experience and grow uh, with, through a very competitive athletic experience uh, across the country, and many of our students come from outside the United States and on on, we're on their country's national teams to compete in the Olympics. So engaging all of them, helping them grow is, is what we do uh, yeah, academically, uh, having great experiences, and, and of course just you know, purely comp, you know, the pure competition. Um, and, and we strive to make it work. Uh, but, you know, it's like being a parent of 650 kids, uh, all of them 18 to 21, 22 for the most part, uh, and there are growing pains. So we just we work with them, we deal with it. What has surprised you most about the position that maybe you didn't anticipate until you actually sat in that seat? Well, there are lots of things that will surprise you, Stan, and I'm sure you've read them, you've seen the news all around uh, the country uh, in terms of what's going on. Uh, but every day you just try and work to do it the right way, uh, avoid the risks, uh, making sure there's integrity in the program. And when there's not, uh, you fix it, uh, you make people accountable, and you move forward. Because you're very active, obviously, on Saturdays, I'm wondering, Lynn, how closely uh, do you follow pro football, and in particular the Steelers from out on the West Coast? Well, I try and follow them. I, 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 I see the big stories. Uh, you know, there were hardly the any of those. There were hardly <laughs> any of those this year. <laughs> Take your but, pick. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, Pittsburgh is uh, certainly my team. I will always be my team, and I will always follow the Steelers. Uh, but as you know, Stan, uh, when you're when you're not covering a team, when you're not in the locker room on a daily basis, uh, there's a lot that you don't get a chance to see, or a lot that you don't know. Uh, but with uh, all the news and all the Twitter and all the conversation, it doesn't seem to be an awful lot that you miss outside the locker room. Yeah, unfortunately, we have had a lot of conversation about that, and there have been a lot of opinions offered and rendered from people, as you say, are 2,000 miles away and you know don't see what goes on. And to be honest, I don't have to tell you that even a local reporter doesn't see or isn't privy to all that goes on in a locker room. No, that's true, and, and so it's 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 difficult at best. Um, you know, it, it's it to some degree uh, gets to be a, a bit invasive trying to find the the real truth and what's going on. Um, sometimes I wonder if there's a real need to know. Uh, that's true. I'm sure the organization uh, feels like that. Uh, we've uh, embarked on this series, done it for a couple of years now, about the Hall of Honor. Uh, and I wonder, obviously, being enshrined in Canton is the ultimate for any pro football player. Uh, but what did it mean to you be, to be inducted uh, and included in the Steelers Hall of Honor? Well, I mean, I think it meant a great deal to all of us, uh, uh, certainly, to be in the inaugural class um, uh, for Pittsburgh in terms of uh, this is where – uh, we we did our our best, and this is with our teammates uh, to be in a position to be a Hall of Famer uh, in Canton, Ohio. Uh, so it's paying homage and tribute uh, to the team and to the organization and to the fans uh, who helped us be our very best uh, and to receive the honor. And it's a it's certainly 
uh, the best way I can think of uh, for anybody who's in the Hall of Fame in Canton and for all of us who play professional football uh, to pay tribute for a teammate who may not, in the eyes of the voters, be in the Hall of Fame in Canton, but they are certainly Hall of Famers in building the team and the success that we had. I'm glad you mentioned that, Lynn, because uh, initially the late Dan Rooney and his son, Art, that was the concept behind the formation of the Hall of Honor. Um, there are going to be some guys who are not going to get to Canton. We think there some should be. Uh, two of the inaugural members of the Hall of Honor class were put in initially because the committee believed that both L.C. Greenwood and Donnie Shell should be in Canton. They're not, may not get there. Uh, but I'm wondering, um, the, you had so many Hall of Fame players on the dynasty teams but there are some really good football players that you played with who, again, may not get that kind of recognition. And that's true. And, but without those players, uh, all, all those Steeler players who are in the Hall of Fame, uh, I don't believe would have gotten the recognition, would have had the success that catapulted us, them, into the Hall of Fame. Uh, and, and so it's, it's our way, as you said, of saying these are players who are deserving of being in the biggest Hall of Fame and the most important Hall of Fame, uh, but uh, you know may not get the votes to get there, but they will always be the foundation and pillars of success in the history of, Pit- of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Lynn, this might be an unfair question. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Uh, but I've asked. Don't worry, Stan. I can I can always move. That's right. Exactly. You can, <laughs> you can always hang up. You know, at any time you want. Uh, the uh, the the um, uh, I've asked all the guys uh, if there was a player or two that you played with who currently not yet in the Hall of Honor uh, or obviously not in Canton that you would like to see uh, give, give them that award as soon as possible. Guy you played with. Well, you know, I, I I think certainly, you know, yeah, you know, Donnie Shell's in the Hall of Honor, and 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 LC, uh, you know, the, you mentioned them already in in terms of being, you know, guys who could be in the Hall of Fame in Canton, uh, who played great football, uh, who were the, who were part of the spirit of 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 our football team, uh, you know, Donnie Donnie Shell being a, a walk, you know, a, a free agent player. Uh, started to call him a walk-on. That's yeah. a college term. There you go, uh, right? <laughs> a free agent. You give player. Donnie a scholarship now. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, he 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 breaks in as a, as a free agent on a team that had gone to to the playoffs two years in a row, uh, and 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 played great football. But yet he comes in with a group of rookies who make this team and plays great, goes from a special teams guy to being a starter to being a team captain. Uh, without his kind of spirit and courage on, on the defensive side of the ball and in the locker room, um, you know, he's, I, I don't know that we win four Super Bowls. Uh, he's part of that glue, part of that personality, part of the, of, of the strength, the fiber of the team that, that, that allowed us to play well. And LC was the same way. I mean, and, you know, not just in terms of the way he played, but the levity and the fun he brought to the game. <laughs> even, even, even in his dress-offs after the game, it was deserving of Hall of Fame mention. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. It, uh, we, we, we try to mention people uh, every week, and we're including, you know, people from later years as well. But just your I mean, Mike Wagner's name has come up a great deal. Larry Brown. Uh, Larry Brown. Uh, yeah, I mean. I mean La- La- Larry Brown was unbelievable. Uh, as as a as a right tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean I mean absolutely unbelievable uh, in terms of his consistency, his abilities, his talent, his unselfishness. Uh, yet because of all the other players, you know, and and when you move a tight end uh, to tackle, it almost seems like you're saying, well, you weren't good enough to play one. But the reality was there was a better fit for Larry at tackle than there was at tight end, especially the fact that we didn't throw the ball that often to the tight end. And Larry, Larry should have been nominated and made All-Pro on multiple occasions. I, I agree. And you know, other guys of that ilk, I mean, guys like John Kolb and Moon Mullins and Gordon Gravel, um, you know, they, they hardly ever get mentioned, but that's why Dan wanted to establish the Hall of Honor. Lynn, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. It was great talking to you. Continued success. Uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, on the Trojans and hope they do well. Uh, and, again, uh, thanks again so much. Stan, thank you. Uh, all my best, always. 
uh, to the Pittsburgh fans and uh, the Steeler faithful. Uh, looking forward to getting back to Pittsburgh at uh, some point in time, uh, and uh, you know, watching the Steelers play and watching them continue to have great success. Well, maybe at this year's induction ceremony, it's a tough time of the year for you. But as they say in the commercial, we'll leave the light on for you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hey, Lynn, thank you very, very much. I appreciate All it. All right, Stan. Take care. Thank you. Bye. The great Bye. Lynn Swan, number eighty-eight, with us on Savern on Sports. Still to come, it'll be Stan and Guy time. Stan and Guy at the top of the hour, right here on ESPN Pittsburgh.